good morning students today our topic is transport system so this is an important topic in class 10 biology transport system if you want to see the full chapter transport system you can click the link given in the description so here we are discussing some important questions already in the first part of this video we discussed one to six questions and their answers so if you want to see the first part you can click the link in the description this is the second part here we are discussing question 7 to 12 the important questions that is the second half of the lesson transport system so let us see the question here seventh question the liquid part of the blood after clotting is called what is the question here the liquid part of the blood after clotting so the blood it is a fluid connective tissue you know that blood is a fluid connective tissue it is a connective tissue in the form of fluid blood and the fluid connective tissue and chapter so connective tissue and 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 tissue so blood has two parts cellular part liquid part what is the question what is the name of the liquid part i think liquid part ki two names unnai so blood blood la unnapudu dantlo unde liquid part ki oka peru untadi blood after clotting if once the blood get clotted the clot and the liquid part get separated so that liquid part has another name ब्लड क्लाटिंग आवकोंड़ों उन्न लिक्विड पार्ट को पेरु ब्लड क्लाट है इन दर्वाथ यार पड़े लिक्विड पार्ट के वेरुक पेरु उन्दि बोथ आर डेफरेंट So the question is the liquid part of the blood after clotting ब्लड क्लाट है इन दर्वाथ फॉर्म है लिक्विड पार्ट पेरे एंटी Do you know that? So blood लो उन्दि liquid part generally it is called as plasma plasma is the name of the liquid part of blood but without clotting right but once it is clotted then what is it called as it is called as serum it is called as serum so what is the difference between serum and plasma plasma is the liquid part of blood without clotting serum is the liquid part of blood after clotting of blood so do you find any difference in plasma and serum in their composition but composition in a theta on the yes there is a little difference Plasma has more proteins when compared to serum. Serum is missing some proteins. Where they have gone? Those proteins are used in the process of clotting. So blood clot type in that one is the serum. Blood clot type in that one proteins use a pipe. Right? So that is the difference between plasma and serum. So here the answer is serum. Let us see the next question. Let us see the next question. What is the value of diastolic pressure in a healthy individual? So what is the value of diastolic pressure in a healthy individual? So what is diastolic pressure? The pressure exerted by the heart, the pressure exerted by the blood in the blood vessels. Blood vessels low, blood exert chase pressure ni manam blood pressure anto. Right? So I take it, it is in two ways diastolic pressure systolic pressure what is diastole and systole these two are the two different stages of heart pumping of heart the heart pumps the blood to different body parts and it collects the blood so while collecting the blood the chambers of the heart they get relaxed that means they get opened completely and the blood fills in the heart that is the diastolic stage during the systole the blood is pumped into the blood vessels so the pressure varies pressure anedi maartu untundi blood vessels lo perugutu untundi taggutu untundi heart pump chestunnapudu perugutundi heart blood ni teeskuntunnapudu taggutundi so ee pump chesinappudu that is that stage is called as systole and when it is collecting it is called diastole so which pressure is more when the heart is pumping then the pressure is more in the blood vessels systolic pressure is more Diastolic pressure is less. What is the value of diastolic pressure? That is the question. 
what is the value of the diastolic pressure so if you see the bp of a normal healthy individual generally you find that value 120 by 80 mm hg so 120 by 80 the numerator it denotes the systolic pressure already we discussed that systolic pressure is more compared to diastolic pressure so the top one 120 number denotes the systolic pressure the bottom number 80 mm hg is the diastolic pressure so the answer is 80 mm hg so the question is what is the value of diastolic pressure in a healthy individual the answer is 88 mm hg right let's move to the next question which cells of the blood initiates the clotting process of blood so which cells of the blood the clotting process what is clotting blood clotting when there is a cut when there is a cut bleeding takes place that means the blood flows out when a blood vessel is cut the blood flows out of it it has to be stopped otherwise it leads to overbleeding and loss of blood so to avoid that the blood has to be clotted here the question is which cells of the blood that means the cells of the blood itself helps in clotting process they initiate the clotting process that means they take up the first step of preventing the bleeding right so what are those cells do you know do you know the names of cells of blood what are the different cells of blood red blood cell white blood cells these are the two different type of cells there is one more type what are they yes platelets so here the answer is platelets platelets are the cells that initiate the clotting process when there is a cut in the blood vessel when the blood is flowing out these platelets they reach the site of damage they reach the site of cut where the cut has happened and these platelets they club together they form a temporary plug the plug it's a temporary clot once they form the plug it initiates it activates so many clotting factors present in the blood blood has got the remaining clotting factors so it is a chain reaction a series of changes takes place so many factors contribute to the permanent clot but to happen the permanent clot first the temporary clot must happen so this temporary clotting is initiated by the platelets platelets are a kind of blood cells they are the cellular fragments they are colorless and they are formed in the bone marrow they help in the process of clotting so let's see the next question which tissue helps in the transport of food which tissue helps in the transport of food in plants right which tissue helps in the transport of food in plants so plants they have the transport system but the transport system is not as complex as in animals they have a very simple transport system they have two specialized tissues for transport of materials you know that we studied in class 9 they have xylem and phloem now out of these two tissues xylem and phloem which tissue is responsible for the transportation of food right you you know do you know that yes xylem is for the transport of water and the next one phloem it is for the transport of food so the answer is phloem phloem carries the food from one part to another part while the food is being prepared in the leaf the prepared food is carried to store some other part store at some other part so the phloem carries the food from leaves to some other part if you take a carrot carrot plant food is stored in the root so the leaf prepares the food the prepared food is carried from leaf to root through this phloem so downward direction top to bottom sometimes when the food is reneated at some other part the food is transported through the phloem to other part so in upward direction as well as in downward direction in both the directions the food can be transported but in xylem the water get transported in upward direction from bottom to top right so that is the difference so phloem tissue helps in the transport of food in plants right let us see the next question let us see the next question 
how many liters of water is evaporated by a big tree in one day so here the evaporation of water takes place by the leaves we call this process as transpiration right so we call it as a transpiration so the plants they take up the water from the soil and this water is evaporated into the atmosphere which is called as transpiration how much water is taken up and released into the air per day by a big tree do you know the answer approximately it is 900 liters so 900 liters of water is taken by a tree if you take one acre of a corn field right so oka ekaram corn field mokkazanna field panta teeskunte it will evaporate 12000 to 15000 liters of water per day so that much amount of water huge amount of water is taken up so that is the reason there is more rainfall in the areas with more forest so plants are responsible for this evaporation they take a major role in the water cycle right and how this transpiration helps the plant so transpiration valla rains form outne water anedi circulate outundi that is okay mokka ke ela help outundi transpiration due to this transpiration the water is being pulled against the gravity so tree lo water circulation jaragali ante water any parts ki sarafara avali ante gravity ki against ga water kinda nunchi pai ki flow avali ante transpiration help chestundi but transpiration is the not only the process which helps in the movement of water but it is one which helps which contributes for the movement of water transport of water right so that is the answer the answer is 900 liters approximately this is an approximation because we didn't mention what is the tree and how much that tree is just a big tree so approximately 900 liters is the answer as per the textbook so the next question here which part of the heart has thickest walls which part of the heart has thickest walls heart lo a chamber ki thickest walls unnai that is the question so we know that there are four chambers two auricles that is two atria and two ventricles so which chambers have got thick walls we know that atria atria have thin walls do you know the reason because atria has to pump the blood just into the ventricles atria are not pumping the blood to anywhere else they are not pumping the blood to far places just they have to pump down into the ventricle but the ventricles they have to pump the blood to different parts so here with this logic we can understand which chambers have thick walls auricles that is atria or ventricles definitely ventricles ventricles have thick walls because they have to pump the blood with great force otherwise it will not reach the different parts of our body out of these ventricles that is right and left ventricle which ventricle has got the thickest walls so what is the job of the right ventricle right ventricle has to pump the blood into the lungs right ventricle has to pump the blood to lungs left ventricle has to pump the blood to different parts of the body so the left ventricle it has to pump with a great force left ventricle body la anni parts ki kuda blood supply ela pump cheyali right ventricle lungs varaku reach ayyalaga blood ni pump chestundi so obviously ikkada left ventricle edaithe undo left ventricle walls baaga thick ga untai right so out of the four chambers two atria two ventricles lo left ventricle has got the thickest walls as it has to pump the blood to different parts of the body so this is the answer the answer is left ventricle which part of the heart has thickest walls answer is left ventricle so these are the different questions that uh, that is about the transport system if you want to listen the full lesson explanation there is a link in the description you can click the link and watch the full lesson and in this video we have seen 7 to 12 questions 1 to 7 1 to 6 questions that is in the previous part part 1 that link is also given in the description and it is also given in the end screens 
you can click the link and you can watch the video right if you like the video please like it and share it to your friends and any doubts post it in the comment box and subscribe to the channel press the notification button bell icon to get the latest updates